True Crime South Africa is published in conjunction with Arena Holdings, publishers of Times Live, Business Live, Sowetan Live and others. The opinions expressed in this podcast do not necessarily represent the views of Arena Holdings and its affiliates. The following episode may contain sensitive material including descriptions of violence, sexual assault or graphic descriptions of injuries to victims. If you feel you may be triggered by such material, please consider this before accessing our content. To access trauma counseling or services, please see the helpline information on our show notes. Welcome to True Crime South Africa. I'm Nicole Engelbrecht, and this is your Spotlight Minisode. In Spotlight Minisodes, we discuss crime stories that are in the news at the time and relevant related topics. Before we get into today's episode, I'd like to thank our new Patreon supporters. A huge thank you goes out to... Karen Lotter, Al Hawkins, Renee Duomini, Susan Diamond, Karine Lawrence, Louisa Borchardt, Sichlen Dimba, and Jamie Stewart for your support on Patreon. Thank you so much, everyone. Your support really does make a huge difference. If you'd like to support the show on Patreon or PayPal, I'll leave a link in the show notes. You can also support the show and get a 10% discount on your health and beauty needs by purchasing from King Online and using the discount code TCSA10 at checkout. You can also help to support me as an individual creator by checking out the companion podcast I created with Showmax for the Devil's Dorp documentary or by purchasing the Kruger's Dorp Cult Killings audiobook on Audible Google Play Books, or Apple Podcasts. As always, any form of support is greatly appreciated, and it doesn't have to be financial. Sharing of episodes, inviting your friends and family to listen, and interacting on social media all go a long way to keeping the show growing and improving. I have spoken about the case I'm discussing today before, except then it was shortly after the suspect had been arrested, and today, he is a convicted man. He was also given a sentence that got people talking and asking questions. So I reached out to a criminal law firm to get a better understanding of what the sentence really means. And in this minisode, I'm going to analyse that for you so that we can all understand. 23-year-old Tokozani Gianni's Reign of Terror started in 2019 in Reicher Park on the East Rand. He began to lure victims through Facebook, claiming to have jobs in the film industry and arranging for victims to meet him at a predetermined location. Once he had his victims well and truly convinced of his claims, he would request photographs of them, which they would send him either through Facebook or over WhatsApp. He would instruct his victims to travel using public transport only and to meet him at various locations in the Angelo Informal Settlement, which is also on the East Rand. He would then lure his victims into the bushes, strangle them until they were unconscious, rape them and rob them. His victims came from as far as Middleburg in Mpumbalanga, Hamanskral, Kwamaklanga, Soweto, Foslurus, and Western Area. Gianni was arrested in 2019 in Dalmas, which is less than an hour from Boxburg, but the prosecutor in that case felt that there was insufficient evidence to link him to the crimes in question at that time, so he was released. Unfortunately, it seems that Gianni simply boarded the first taxi out of Dalmas to escape the heat, headed straight to Boxburg, and picked up where he left off in this new location. He was finally arrested in March 2020, after an informer raised the alarm to police. Gianni would be identified by six of the victims during an identity parade. The modus operandi was the same in all of the crimes he was charged with. In early August, the High Court sentenced Gianni to eight life terms and a further 223 years. He was found guilty of 17 counts of rape, 
and 10 counts of robbery with aggravating circumstances, two counts of kidnapping and assault with grievous bodily harm, as well as three counts of fraud. It is not uncommon to see these types of sentences in serial crimes of this nature. The impact of such a huge sentence is often twofold. The public feels satisfied that the offender has been dealt a punishment that befits the crime, but often we also question what these sentences actually mean. I often hear people saying that life sentences are misrepresented because life should mean life, and in the case of our sentencing parameters, it does not always mean that the offender's entire natural life will be spent incarcerated. I also often hear people saying that South Africa is the only country in the world where life does not mean life, and that is entirely untrue. In fact, in most countries in the world, a life sentence does not mean life, but judges have the option to sentence without the possibility of parole, which, if the sentence issued ends up being longer than the natural lifespan of the offender, means they'll never get out of prison. In most of Western Europe, for example, a life sentence actually means that after a minimum term of 12 to 25 years, the prisoner becomes eligible for parole. However, in most of Europe, prisoners who are considered to be dangerous can be sentenced to an indefinite detention, despite eligibility for parole. In England and Wales, most prisoners with life sentences will be eligible for parole or early release after a minimum term set by the judge. The average minimum term is now 15 years. In some exceptionally grave cases, however, a judge may order that a life sentence should actually mean life by passing down a whole life order. In France, Inmates jailed for life are eligible for parole after 18 years served, or after 22 for repeat offenders. In cases of child murder involving rape or torture, a French court can impose a term of 30 years or decide that the defendants cannot be paroled. In Germany, the minimum time to be served for a sentence of life is 15 years, after which the prisoner can apply for parole. Prisoners serving a life sentence in Denmark are entitled to a pardoning hearing after 12 years. Danish prisoners sentenced to life imprisonment serve an average of 16 years, and sometimes more if the case is particularly grave. In Poland, the prisoner serving a life sentence must serve at least 25 years before becoming eligible for parole. The highest maximum prison term there is 50 years. The Netherlands is the only European exception. Since 1878, after the abolition of the death penalty in the Netherlands, life imprisonment has almost always meant serving time in prison until death. It is one of the few countries in Europe where prisoners are not granted a review for parole after a given time. Though the prisoner can appeal for parole, it must be granted by a royal decree and is almost never successful. And in the country that most people compare the South African legal system to as a pinnacle of justice, the United States, most offenders that receive life sentences will serve just 15 years before becoming eligible for parole. In South Africa, offenders sentenced to a life sentence must now serve 25 years before becoming eligible for parole. Many countries across the world have completely abolished life sentences and instead sentence according to individual crimes. So just looking at these numbers coming out of other countries, we really are one of the countries with a longer length of imprisonment for life sentences. A report issued in 2008 put the average age of South African offenders 
between the ages of 31 and 40. The average life expectancy of a South African is 63 years old. So if a 40-year-old is sentenced to a life sentence, there's a pretty good chance they will die in jail. The other thing that is important to remember is that just because a life sentence offender becomes eligible for parole at 25 years, firstly, does not mean that they will actually receive it, and secondly, does not mean that they are now no longer serving their sentence. A life sentence means that even if the offender is released on correctional supervision or parole, they will need to live under specified conditions for the rest of their lives. That's where the life bit comes in. If they're found to have contravened any conditions of their parole, they can be returned to jail to continue serving their sentence. So Tokozani Gianni was sentenced to eight life terms and a further 223 years. What does that actually mean? I'd like to thank Nadia Stein and her colleagues at BDK Attorneys in Johannesburg for helping to guide me in analysing this sentence. Nadia points out that the first thing we look at when analysing the sentence is that, considering the crimes, the judge would have been bound by the minimum sentence criteria as detailed in Section 51 of the Criminal Amendment Act, 105 of 1997. Section 51 of the Act details the minimum prescribed sentences for certain offences, including rape. It is viewed in conjunction with Schedule 2, which also forms part of the Act. In Gianni's case, when viewing the section and schedule pointed out by Nadia, it becomes clear why life sentences would have come into play considering the facts of the case. The section and schedule in question details that a life sentence becomes applicable in a rape case in the following circumstances. Quote, 1. In circumstances where the victim was raped more than once, whether by the accused or by any co-perpetrator or accomplice. 2. By more than one person, where such persons acted in the execution or furtherance of a common purpose or conspiracy. 3. By a person who has been convicted of two or more offences of rape, or compelled rape, but has not been sentenced in respect of such convictions. Or 4. By a person knowing that he has acquired immune deficiency syndrome, or the human immunodeficiency virus. Or where the victim is a person under the age of 16 years, is an older person as defined in Section 1 of the Older Persons Act, is a physically disabled person, is a person who is mentally disabled as contemplated in Section 1 of the Criminal Law, or involving the infliction of grievous bodily harm. End quote. In the case of Tokozani Gianni's crimes, the two aspects that would have been applicable is that he had been, in that same trial, convicted of two or more offences of rape, and not yet sentenced for those crimes, and also that the rapes involved the infliction of grievous bodily harm. So that is where the eight life sentences comes from in Gianni's sentence. But we know that he also received an additional 223 years, and that he was found guilty of other charges. Schedule 2 of Section 51 of the Act is also broken down into different parts relating to different crimes. Part 1, as I've mentioned, relates to murder in certain circumstances and rape. Part 2 relates to murder in circumstances other than those laid out in Part 1, robbery, drug offences, firearm offences, extortion, terrorism, organised crime, and theft of ferrous or non-ferrous metals. Part 3 relates to rape, other than what is referred to in Part 1, sexual exploitation of a child, assault on a child under 16, and ammunition offences. 
part four of the schedule, relates to a range of offences, including kidnapping. So looking at the charges of which Gianni was found guilty, besides part one, his offences also fell under part two for robbery, part three for rapes other than detailed in part one, and part four for kidnapping. Section 51 also provides guidelines to a judge as to the minimum sentence an offender should be given, depending on whether they are a first, second or third time offender. This is why information is often presented by a defence attorney in mitigation of sentence. The minimum sentences, of course, increase with the number of times you've offended. As an example, the offences discussed in Part 2 of Schedule 2, murder in circumstances other than those laid out in Part 1, robbery, drug offences, firearm offences, extortion, terrorism, organised crime, and the theft of ferrous or non-ferrous metals, will incur minimum sentences as follows. Quote, a first offender to imprisonment for a period not less than 15 years. A second offender of any such offence to imprisonment for a period not less than 20 years. And a third or subsequent offender of any such offence to imprisonment for a period not less than 25 years. End quote. So if we break down the additional charges that Gianni was convicted of, and consider that he committed these offences multiple times in his series of crimes, this is where the additional 223 years comes from. But as many have been asking on social media, what does this actually mean in terms of incarceration? Some have said that it's pointless to list all the life sentences and additional years. But really, it's actually very important, and we'll get to why in a minute. Again, Nadia Stain and her colleagues at BDK Attorneys helped me to understand how much of this sentence Gianni is likely to serve and when he may be eligible for parole. The piece of legislation that governs this question is the Correctional Services Act No. 11 of 1998. Section 73 of this Act deals with when an offender will become available for parole. The section details that, quote, a sentenced offender may be placed under correctional supervision, day parole, parole, or medical parole before the expiration of his or her term of incarceration. End quote. Specifically relating to the cases at hand here, the section states that quote, a person who has been sentenced to life incarceration may not be placed on day parole or parole until he or she has served at least 25 years of the sentence, end quote. So in Tokozani Gianni's case, he will be required to be incarcerated for 25 years before being eligible for parole. Of course, he would only be eligible for parole and not automatically receive it. And one of the things that the parole board would take into account underlines the importance of stating his cumulative sentence in years. The section also states that, quote, A sentenced offender serving a determinate sentence or cumulative sentences of more than 24 months may not be placed on day parole or parole until such sentenced offender has served either the stipulated non-parole period or if no non-parole period was stipulated, half of the sentence, end quote. When the parole board considers Gianni for parole in 2046, they will look at the cumulative sentence passed down by the judge, and it will become apparent that 25 years is not even a third of the cumulative sentence. While this fact does not prohibit them from granting parole, it will make it highly unlikely that he will be granted parole at that time. So when we look at sentences like these, and we feel the justice system is just whacking out 
these incredibly long-sounding sentences to make society feel better, they aren't. It actually does make a difference. I think that analysing sentences like this also helps us to better understand why some sentences appear to be more excessive than others when we take into account the type of crime committed. In some cases, for instance, a murderer may receive a lesser sentence than someone that committed armed robbery. And it's because the circumstances of the crime are taken into account, as well as many other factors. I think that it is extremely important for the public at large to understand how sentencing and parole works, and that includes me. Crime is unfortunately a major part of our daily lives, and we see over and again how the victims of crimes do not always understand the sentences handed down to perpetrators. In analysing this, I think it also helps us to better understand the trial process and why certain factors are taken into account, because it may well impact the eventual sentence. I do hope that you've enjoyed today's minisode. I'd like to once again thank Nadia Stein and her colleagues at BDK Attorneys in Johannesburg for their assistance in analysing this sentence. If you enjoyed this minisode, please be sure to follow us on the platform you're using to listen right now. You can also follow us on social media. We're on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. I'll be back next Friday with a full case episode. Until then, as always, thank you for your support and I'll chat to you soon.